In a great pyre, he burned all the hieroglyphic books he could find, claiming that they contained only lies of the devil. The writing system totally died out uh, in the centuries that followed the Spanish conquest. I mean, people were probably uh, burned at the stake for, for writing in the old system early on. And uh, by the 18th century, I don't think anybody could write. So they burned hundreds, maybe thousands of books. We will never know. We probably lost forever lots of histories and all. And of course, out of all of that, only four books or partial books survive. One Maya book, probably sent back to Europe by Cortez, made its way to the Royal Library of Dresden, Germany. It is called the Dresden Codex, or manuscript book. Another surfaced in Madrid, a third in Paris, a fourth was found in Mexico in the 1960s. Of all the innumerable books of the Maya, only these four are known to have survived. In 1810, a massive volume on the Americas was published in Paris. One of its illustrations reproduced five pages of the Dresden Codex. This image would inspire the first breakthrough in the decipherment by the eccentric Constantine Raffinesque. It is a positive fact that I have been a botanist, historian, poet, philosopher, merchant, manufacturer, economist, philanthropist, palmist, improver, architect, surveyor, <laughs> and I hardly know myself what I may become as yet. The insatiable Raffinesque was fascinated by these first published images of Maya glyphs. He looked at these bar and dot numbers and he said that, look, um, th there's these bars and dots, but you never get more than four dots. A bar probably stands for five. Uh, one would be a one dot, two would be two dots, three would be three dots, four, four dots, then you'd have a bar and then a dot would make it six. Two dots and a bar are seven, three dots and a bar eight, and so on. And that was the first time anybody had ever deciphered a Maya hieroglyph. That is the beginning of the decipherment. 